In this video, we'll take a look at the scenario of our authentication session expiring. As explained in the previous video, the problem occurs when during the first time that we connect to our hub, we establish a connection and we pass either a cookie or the access token at that point. After that point, the cookie can expire or the token can expire. That means that connection to the hub may no longer be invalid. Or if the hub is reusing the cookie or the token to access some kind of other resource, that's going to return 401s and 403s. So we want to be able to recreate the cookie or the token and re-establish the connection. This video will cover hub filters as well as some error handling techniques. As always, let's start with looking at the project startup. Let's start at the top. I have removed the JWT token authentication schema. And in this project is similar to the previous one. We're just using the custom cookie authentication schema. This hub filter should really be enabled and we'll take a look at it in a second. But the main difference between the custom cookie in the previous video, and if you haven't watched the previous video, link to the playlist is in the description and the source code is there as well. Our uh, custom cookie authentication handler is pretty much the same except for one thing. And that's the expiry time. The expiry time, I'm, I'm setting it here as I am creating this session. In reality, this value should be coming from the cookie value. However, as I mentioned in the previous video, this is not a production ready solution. This is me just stubbing authentication. So just to make a clear note, I am putting the expiry time into the expires claim. Then what we have is the auth hub filter. It is a hub filter. So this is a specifically middleware or a signal R. And then again, we have the user ID provider. If you don't know what that does, go watch the previous video. For the endpoints, we have the protected hub and then we have get cookies. Again, if you don't know what happened in the previous video, go watch it. But this is the more or less simple setup. We have index HTML. Uh, we have the connection to the protected hub. We have the connection itself. Again, we have the timeout to know where 30 seconds has passed and the cookie or token has expired. By the way, I'm only working with the cookie in this video. If you want, you can logically replace the steps from cookies to tokens and it should work just fine. The ideas that I explain here should work for both. We then have the get cookie function, which just gets the cookie. We have some middleware, which we're going to go over later and not middleware, but more like error handling. And then we have the get method, which will just call the authorized resource on the hub. And then we have a little testing function here. In the startup, let's take a look at the protected hub. And protected hub is really simple. We have the authorized request where I just return a string. I have the hub authorized on the custom cookie authentication schema, which is what we have registered here. And then we have the hub filter. Let's take a look at the hub filter. This is the interface that you have to implement and uh, then you just uh, you know, have to add the filter in your signal or options. But in the hub filter, you can specify three things. What happens on connected? So this would execute before the hub on connected uh, and on disconnected methods that I've showed in the feature overview videos. Otherwise, the more apparent one and the one that we are really interested is the method that is called before the actual handle on the hub. So before this is called, this will be called and before the next filters. This is where I want to essentially handle the expiry time. This is where I read the expiry time. I parse it as a long because we're, we're storing ticks. I load it into the date time offset. I don't need any offset there. I'm using the UTC now, the same thing that I've used for when I created the cookie and I subtract the expiry date. If right now is bigger than what we expect it to expire, it's going to be more than zero. That means authentication has expired and I'm going to throw an exception. There are other ways that we can attempt to handle disconnecting the client from the server side, such as just sending another message or in the protected hub, I have uh, the abort method here just to kind of highlight it. You can abort the connection. I'm just going to mention why some approaches might be preferable over the other ones and what I think should be done. Nevertheless, we have uh, all these components. Let's go ahead and see them work. So coming back here uh, to the index, so this is the thing that we're going to look at. So first, let's go ahead and try and connect. We're not authorized because we need a cookie. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get a cookie and then we're going to connect. So once we've connected, we can try call get and we get the authorized resource. Cool. Now what's going to happen is because I'm checking the expiry time here, it's basically it's going to go finito in just a second. So now that it went finito, I'm going to call get again and we're going to see auth expired error detected. 
we have disconnected and then we have reconnected and retried the request. Now just waiting for the finito to occur again. Now that finito is here, I'm just gonna run stress. And what we're gonna see is auth expire again detected. We're gonna see queuing request 19 times and then authorize request output 20 times. Taking a look at index.html, stress essentially runs the get function. So it invokes authorized resource 20 times once we have an expired cookie and then all of those requests still succeed. So how do I do this? How do I handle this? Let's step over the code. So first of all, in the auth hub filter, as I said, I'm checking the expiry time before every invocation because SignalR doesn't really give you any built-in event emitting. It's not going to sever the connection to the hub. So you have to check this manually. And what I'm doing is I'm throwing an exception. Now this is a special exception. This is not just extending an exception. It's extending a hub exception, okay? Hub exception is a special type of exception where SignalR will actually propagate the message that you input it to the client. So what I mean by that is the catch auth error function will try to catch an error. And if the error message contains an auth expired, which is basically this error code that I'm supplying here, if it contains that error code, that means the authentication has expired. The connection recreation is like a promise or a process that I then store. And we will just stop there. When we throw an exception, we understand that the authentication has expired. And then the way that we want to renew the session, we want to stop the connection, obtain the new credentials, and then restart the connection. And then once we have that connection, we want to retry the request. And that's precisely what I'm doing here. So I say connection stop. Once the connection has stopped, the promise will resolve. I will obtain a new cookie. That's what I'm doing here. And then once I have the cookie, I will connect. And that's what the connect does here. And then once I have connected, I'm gonna clear this connection recreation thing going on here. And then I will execute the P function. What is the P function? Catch auth error, accept a function of what I want to do. So the function is authorize resource and then console log it. This will in the end return a promise in and of itself, but it's a function that generates a promise. So this is really my function for a promise for the request. And what I do initially is I execute that function, which returns me a promise for that request to which I attach this error handling. So this function is really a reusable way to attach a piece of error handling to all requests that I'm gonna make to the hub because I can have many requests, not just one get request. I can have hundred requests and I wanna make sure I handle errors on all those functions. And this is a way to do it. Treat P as the original request that I'm making. When the authentication has expired, this process right here is the connection recreation process. The connection recreation process is the stoppage of the connection, the getting of the cookie or the token, and then reconnecting and then retrying the request. The whole reason for storing the connection recreation process is because during that connection recreation process, more requests can go. And this is what we're seeing here these queuing of requests. The queuing of requests happens here. This is where the connection state is not connected. So we've stopped the connection here, connection.stop, and connection recreation is not null. This is when the connection recreation process is in motion and we don't have a connection to send our requests down. So if we didn't have this step, all of our requests would have failed then and uh, that wouldn't be good. Another thing that could happen is because this doesn't really happen in parallel, but I'm assuming it could, you could have multiple requests going to your hub and both of those requests are going to get auth expired. The first request will create the connection recreation. The second request that goes down here will hit the else statement and then it will take a look at the connection recreation process, which is a promise in and of itself. And then basically once the connection recreation process finishes and the original request has been retried, then retry my request as well. Hopefully that makes sense, which is the same thing that we do here. If the connection recreation process promise exists, once it finishes, which is here, just go ahead and retry this original request as well. And this is how all 20 requests here 
get retried even though we're in the process of obtaining a new token or reconnecting and this is assuming you're not going to redirect somewhere because if you redirect somewhere the connection is going to be severed so this is worst case scenario where you don't go anywhere you have some kind of background process that reobtains a token or a cookie and you're just staying on the same screen and you just need to handle those breaking connections in the background this looks a little bit convoluted and if you haven't understood my explanation uh, i mean this piece of code may be a little bit hard to explain but stepping through it one by one, you should understand what it does. Also, uh, browser JavaScript is not a multi-threaded environment, so there is no real way to kick off all of these requests exactly at the same time. Other than that, we can actually take this through multiple approaches and you might come up with other solutions like, for example, sending a message session expired and doing the same process. So if we receive a message, session expired, so that means your authentication session has expired. That's uh, what I have in my auth hub filter. So instead of throwing an error, an exception, we're just gonna send a call. Your session has expired. I'm not gonna run this code, but I'm just gonna explain why you don't want this. First, you will need this event management, which is uh, in and of itself isn't really scary. You will connection stop, you will unsubscribe from this original event of session expire. That means if there is a, another a re request in flight, it might not actually reach this. But we then go ahead to obtain a new cookie. We then try to reconnect where we resubscribe to this event. And then we want to retry the original request. This is where the hard part is. And uh, with this catching of the error, we have the original request on which we're catching the error. With this one, we don't have the information about what the original request is. If we do want that information, we need to keep it on the response. So the message that we're sending back, we need to put, in the, put the information about the invocation context. What method are we invoking? What are the parameters, etc.? Perhaps another, and I would say a least favorable, is having something like a dictionary or a store of invocations or failed invocations. And you're just going to say failed invocation, reason, so as in failed invocation, failed invocation ID, which you can then retry invocation. And that will grab the invocation information from there and then invoke the correct action on the hub. Both of these solutions already require you to keep some state about the original invocation being made in order to retry it. And this is why I don't like this approach. And the specific reason this happens and why we can actually say that we cannot solve this problem is because here we have the original request and when we're handling the error with the knowledge of the original request. So these two things are together. Here, the thing is not near the original request. So you kind of have to glue the two together in order to retry those. Hopefully you get the picture here. These, the original request and this are disconnected. So if you do want to retry requests, this makes it very hard to do so. Another approach that you can have is you have the context abort. And this is just horrible. This just closes the connection and you don't, know the reason why you may close it because authentication session expired any other reason and you could have 10 reasons why your connection may be closed but if you don't know for what reason it closed how can you know what next steps to take you can take a generic step okay connection closed let's refresh the cache let's refresh an authentication session let's refresh all eight other causes out of the 10 causes that could have caused it so you're basically gonna have to do a fresh start every single time to make that connection work. So this abort is really horrible. I don't know why there isn't like a more connection closed for reason approach. This is why throwing a hub exception with some kind of error code that you can identify in your JavaScript with something like error.message index off and your error code. This allows you to uh, uh, basically handle however many errors you have in your one catch error function and then just apply that error catching to all the other functions that w potentially could make requests for that hub. This is pretty much all I have on the authentication expiry handling. Hopefully you get it. If not, rewatch. Highly recommend that if you don't understand the code, do just step through it line by line, explain it to yourself. Otherwise, let's summarize it. SignalR doesn't provide you with any mechanism for tracking authentication expiry specifically when the connection is made, the identity will live until the connection is severed or long polling protocol suddenly becomes used. Therefore, you have to manually keep track of when the authentication session expires. We do so through hub middleware 
and hub middleware implements iHub filter. In the middleware, we check the current authenticated user. You can put if statements if this is for some unauthenticated endpoints, but essentially you check the expiry of the current session. If it's expired, it's preferable to throw an error code because there could be many error codes and it's easier to tie the failed request to retrying the requests later on rather than telling the hub that something has failed and then somehow trying to tie the two things together. Like, oh yeah, that, that request failed. Okay, where's that actual request? What it was it? Let's retry it, right? So we don't want to do this, throw a custom exception to know exactly what has failed and for what reason. So you can handle things appropriately. And then in order to actually get a new identity for your hub, you have to reestablish that connection. So you have to disconnect, obtain the new token or cookie, and then reestablish the connection. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section or ask them on my Discord server. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.